Um, I know you guys are tired. I know you just had lunch. I know you have a lot of very interesting information coming your way. So I'm going to say the four words you which you're all going to be very grateful to hear. I'm going to be brief, okay? Um, I do live in Spain. I'm not from Spain. I'm from the Soviet Union. Um, I want to talk about Spain, and um, also want to draw a parallel to the United States. Those of you who follow politics a little bit, um, you know that Spain basically is a basket case. The entire country is on strike, nothing works, and nothing will work, as a matter of fact. Um, the headlines in all the major newspapers this past week basically tell you that Spain in 2013 is going to be darker, dirtier, and more unsafe than ever before. In fact, what we're witnessing, as uh, Elga, you've been saying for many years, and your husband has as well, is the uh, whole transfer, uh, wholesale transfer of wealth from the average person into the hands of the elite. Of course, this isn't the first time this is being done. This has been done before. Throughout history, a great example of that is the Great Depression, which really wasn't a Great Depression at all. It was just a transfer of wealth. We, the people, we lost our wealth, we lost our monies, our everything. Um, and uh, somebody came along and bought everything up for cents on the dollar. Of course, this is happening worldwide, but in Spain, to most people, because Spaniards are different in this particular way, it actually came as a shock to most people in Spain. They didn't expect it to happen. And one of the reasons they didn't expect it to happen is because Spaniards seem to believe for some strange unknown to be reason what appears on the nightly news on the front page of leading periodicals. And if it's not on the front page of a leading periodical, it obviously uh, doesn't exist. It's um, also, I think it's safe to say that Spain has long ago ceased to be a nation state and has become a wholesale protectorate of the elite and of the gangster capitalists. The degradation of society is all around you. Those of you who have visited Spain recently or see it on television, and in this sense, again, draw your attention to what uh, um, the La Rouge organization has done with the videos, um, which uh, are very, very useful, especially those of us who live in Spain in that area, um, it really explains the situation very well, just captures the, the agony of, of, of the society. The social services, the health care, the care for the elderly, the public school system is being cut or destroyed by more than 80 percent or completely eliminated in the name of balancing the budget and uh, fiscal responsibility, which is a misnomer for greater corporate control of the resources of the nation. Um, the latest development is the police salaries are also being cut, which means that there will be greater unrest and insecurity in the near future. Now, what's interesting in Spain is that the government is, re is resorting to the, some of the old PR techniques which was used in the United States in the past to reorganize the economy and make it a top-down model. Now, one of the ways in which this is being done is through war on drugs, money laundering, specifically designed supposedly to ensnare the Russian and the Chinese mafias, and obviously, according to the government, this is being done in our name and thinking of our future. Now, if you watch carefully, you'll notice two things. The war on drugs and the war on terror have become a single enterprise. This is very important. Um, as far as I'm concerned, they've always been a single enterprise, uh, looking at it from the design standpoint of the people who are running the planet. The uh, war on terror, I'm convinced, was designed to take the war on drugs to the next step. And frankly, the war on drugs never had anything to do with drugs in the first place. The war on drugs had run out of political quorum, and now the government has given it new energy and impetus. And we have this new war called the war on terror. But the war on drugs and terror against the same enterprise. The money is being laundered the same way, and the situation really hasn't changed. Now, I think it has become obvious to most thinking people that all these wars on alleged invisible enemies is really part of the global war on the people. And I think what's very important to understand, and again, I think you've witnessed from the conferences, um, some of the things I heard yesterday in the afternoon and, and, and what people said today, that we are the enemy. The enemy is not Osama bin Laden. The enemy is not al-Qaeda. The enemy is not the Russians. We, the people, are the enemy. And the sooner you understand this, the sooner you understand that we as people are in danger of being exterminated. And those, of course, who live in the United States, such as uh, uh, Mike Billington, who gave a speech earlier, know exactly what I'm talking about. Another thing you will notice is that there is a tremendous infrastructure of enforcement bureaucracy. 
That's true in Spain. That's obviously true in, in Greece. It's true in the United States. In fact, from reports in the alternative media, there are far more people looking for bad guys than there are actually bad guys out there. And uh, police is everywhere. They're everywhere in the United States. They're also everywhere in Spain. And what's of greater concern is that although there are protesters, most people uh, protests take it in stride. But then again, it shouldn't surprise us. In the United States in this past elections, 110 million voters voted for the two party candidates, which is the Democrats and the Republicans. In Spain, you see exactly the same pattern, which makes you question often uh, the moral compass of, of, of the people. Now, back in the 1930s, the Nazis looted the Jews to finance their occupation. But in today's America, and it's also happening in Spain more and more. It's the neo-Nazis who run the country, led by the degenerates, you know, who are taking up space in the White House. I'm referring to Obama in, uh, in case people have doubts which are the many degenerates I'm actually talking about. Um, and all this lip service which the Demo Democrats and the Republicans paid, you know, to the working class during the elections about how they're all pro-people, when in fact that they're the ones who want to exterminate most people, with their bunker mentality uh, now prevalent in the United States and also in Europe. What they're basically doing is they're circling the wagons and to see who will outlast whom. And this is obviously the war of attrition. It's happening in Greece, it's happening in the United States, and it's happening in Spain. Now, we know that the economy is being collapsed on purpose, and there's a lot of noise being made in the media about how the collapse of the housing market has caught such great, caused such great pain to the family. But... Uh, what in fact is being completely ignored in the media and by the political class is just how much money is being stolen globally with the debasement of the currency. If you look at how much an average household of four people lost through the debasement of the currency, be it the dollar or any other fiat currency over the five-year period, and there are people actually have calculated this over a population of 100,000 people, in purchasing power it works out to over $3.3 billion dollars. Okay, now if you extrapolate this to the population of the first world, the sum becomes incalculable. So everybody's having their monies confiscated daily as we speak, except it doesn't seem to register with the media and the people, because for now at least nobody in the government is resorting to physically stealing your money from you. But then again, they don't have to because they figured out a much stealthier way of, of, of doing that. Then, of course, there's the, uh, the drug trade. Last year, at this time, November 2011, Banco Santander, which is Spain's biggest bank, and also an important member of the Interalpha Group, uh, which uh, we've uh, talked often about uh, with uh, uh, Helga and, uh, and John Hoffel, and if you don't know what Interalpha Group, Inter -Alpha Group is, please make sure you do understand who these people are and how they run the financial and uh, monetary uh, world markets. So Banco Santander... Uh, one of the leading banks in, in this organization, just opened up their biggest branch in the world, in the most dangerous ghetto, favelas as they're called in Spanish, of Rio de Janeiro. And the Spanish media called it social consciousness. Now, what is it that, you know, that a ghetto in Rio has that might be interest, of interest to Emilio Botin, the bank's president, and the Banco Santander? Obviously, drugs. What well, they basically figured out, and this is, again, something that Lynn and Jeff Steinberg and Dennis Mall and, and Helga, obviously, you, you've been warning and talking about for years how the drug proceeds are being laundered through the world's biggest bank, being Hong Shang, being Barclays, Wachovia, Coots, that's the Queen's Bank, Scotiabank, that's one of the leading Canadian banks, Royal Bank of Scotland, Banco Santander, and all the other banks of their inter-alpha group. Hundreds of billions of dollars are being laundered through these institutions, as part of these make-believe wars, and again, as I said before, war on drugs, war on terror, it's the same war, just followed the operation in the same, you know, took it to a, a different uh, degree. And what, we, what we're witnessing literally is the real-life version of the financial coup d'etat. You have the toy soldier wars on the one hand, and the real wars that destroy a far greater number of lives through stealth on the other. So it's interesting to watch now that the presidential elections are over in the United States, um, is how the budget wars, and this is again an important point, in Europe, in the United States, and in Spain, how these budget wars will play themselves out. Um, we're seeing the first signs of what's coming as Spain has literally ground to a halt. The country is up in arms. 
not the whole country, but angry and angry, a far outnumbered the police. And now that the police are getting their um, unemployment uh, checks reduced and, and their salaries reduced and cut in half, these police officers are going to join the angry and the angry. You're going to have a tremendous difficulty of actually maintaining these people in, in, in line. Now, you're all familiar with the term of the fiscal cliff. was heard it, I think, today uh, in one of the presentations. Well, the Spanish prime minister um, is about to be pushed off that cliff, but not before the International Monetary Fund and other corporations, what you call the World Company Limited, get possessions of whatever is left that is still of any value in Spain. Needless to say, white-collar crimes have become daily fodder of the Spanish society at large. And Spain, again, it's, it's a microcosm so far. Uh, but again, if you look at it worldwide, we can connect the dots and see the pattern, be it European community and their budget scuffle, Spain or the United States. Now, over breakfast this morning, I heard someone say justice is the same for everyone. Well, you know, actually it's not. You know, it has never been the same for everyone. In the United States, the elite in Israel, the United Kingdom, you know, um, there are people, organizations who are literally free to kill with impunity, and then you have people, of course, who are not empowered to kill with, uh, with impunity. And if you look at the budget discussion in America, and also right now in Spain, through what's going on in the European community, every expense of the people who are free to kill with impunity is off balance sheet, and their revenues are not taxable. So we are a part of the society where more and more people are not subject to the laws. These people are few, they're relatively speaking, but extremely powerful and growing more and more so on a daily basis. And of course, then you have practically everyone else who's subject, you know, subjected to the laws and who feel greater and greater desperation for the environment they live in. And that's what the political war is all about in Spain, it's what's about in Europe, and that's what it's about in the United States right now as we speak. So if we put it in perspective, and I have another five minutes to go, um, you have the banks who are laundering all this money, but, then, uh, but they're not a separate entity. And Banco Santander, that's Spain's biggest bank, is a good example of this. Rather, all these corporations, Santander, uh, BBVA, that's Spain's second bank, they're a cog in the system working for the people who are above the law. And, of course... Um, this isn't something that is inherent to America. We saw it in the elections in the United States with a Republican candidate and his VP, who is a couple of inches removed from being a fully-fledged Nazi. But you also have the same situation in Spain with the current government and also the current uh, opposition party. The global elite who run the world on a supranational level are always on the lookout for the candidates in every country and in every party who can build enough of a consensus to buy everyone in a solution. And if you pay close attention, again, it's a question of perceptions. You pay attention, what you see on television, and how all these, uh, the political juggernaut actually manipulates your emotions, and how all of these things are being put in the consensus in every country in the world. You will see that things don't really change very, very much, whether you're in the United States or in Spain, because this is exactly what's happening in, uh, in Spain. I mean, in Spain you have this guy by the name of Mariano Rajoy, who was the president. Um, but really the only job he's qualified to do is selling tickets in a zoo. But they dressed him up, they dusted him off, they gave him a new haircut, bought him a new suit, and made him into a president of a country. Now, the system of doing business always worked, and this is important, as long as you could print as much money as you wanted because you didn't have to balance the budget and you just paid everyone off. But things are different now, and you cannot do that anymore. And that's where the problems begin. So you see, in Spain, as you're probably aware, um, there's a tremendous aggravated crisis of people not only losing their livelihood as a result of financial meltdown and, and, and all the debasement of the currency and such, but on top of it, they're being left homeless as banks take their properties away when families can't make their mortgage payments. So the Libor scandal, which we've had uh, hit the front pages a few months ago, by late spring and summer, is being played out in Spain today, is actually being played out in the mainstream media, and they're actually uh, uh, printing enough uh, uh, stories of, of the way Spanish banks manipulate interest rates and so forth that it makes people stand up and actually pay attention. Now, the way I understand, it is uh, about asserting top-down control. 
the central banks in Spain and the United States and the rest of the world are doing everything they can to press down interest rates. They want to institute a system that gives them better control and ability to do that because now sovereign governments, be it in Europe or in the United States, need the lowest possible interest rates and they need to force the banks to lend money to them and not to the broader economy. Now, in the press, the situation is being painted the other way around, as if the governments are helpless against bad banks. Of course, except it isn't true. With the financial coup d'etat, the elite want to move the banks into the utility model. Because if you look at the banks at the moment, they're trading and operating with federal credit. So in conclusion, I think we are the crossroads. And the roads we take now will determine whether we'll live in the 21st century as nation-state republics or subjugated, called and dehumanized crop of slaves. The situation is extremely grave. But the human will is immortal amidst the deafening cacophony of patriotic silence. Insurgent voices command attention, and we have one of these insurgent voices on stage with us today. Immortality has its moral basis in truth and incorruptibility. It deserves to be given all the support that it can get. It deserves to be fought and died for. And finally, Goya's plate 79 of disasters show the fair maid of liberty flat on her back, bosom exposed. Ghostly figures play about the corpse while monks dig her grave. Truth has died. Murió la verdad. Now, how is that for an alternative? Forewarned is forearmed. It's not up to God to save us. It's up to us. We will never find the right answers if we can't ask the proper questions. Thank you very much.